Tubers, Tibets, crazy people. Um, I haven't titled this video yet. I think it's going to be something along the lines of wishful thinking. And I think I can speak with a little expertise on that because I'm guilty of it. <laughs> and over the last few months, I have met well over 100 different guys over here. Now, mixed in with the guys that I'm meeting, I'm also meeting with married couples, um, people that have lived in America as husband and wife, met in America and are moving over here. They're doing great. Um, I've met people that are not necessarily married, but they've, they've been together. And then I've met single guys that are coming over here and are looking for one thing or another. And that's who I'm going to kind of focus on. Um, and I, as you can imagine, when I hear the stories and their experiences, I hear the good and I hear the bad. And then, of course, I hear the ugly. And the point that I want to make on this video primarily is that there are going to be circumstances that are beyond your control when you come out here. I think that I'm guilty and a lot of other vloggers are guilty, not intentionally, but we seem to paint this rosy picture of the Philippines. And that's primarily because it is, in my world at least, fairly rosy. And I've had a number of guys go, dude, I just want your life. Uh, they're not here yet, of course. <laughs> they're still in Duluth somewhere, you know, freezing their ass off. <laughs> but <laughs> that being said, they're like, you know, you got your finances are under control. You never seem stressed out. Um, you got a beautiful girlfriend, and she's really sweet and genuine. And, um, you know, you're killing it over there. And I can't disagree with them. Um, and that's not brag, it's just kind of fact, it's just sort of circumstances. But i got to clarify that that's not something that happened overnight. I had my pitfalls, I had my mistakes. Um, I've, I've gone over those in previous videos. And I just think that it's important, since there's been a ton of new subscribers on the channel, and um, a lot of views on recent videos, um, that some of the stuff is worth rehashing a little bit. I'm not trying to repackage old stuff. I've just come up with new ideas as to how to try to explain it without giving advice. And I like to use myself as the example. So, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, the guys that are coming over here, so far so good. They found a nice place that they like to live in. Um, they're doing good. They've got transportation lined up, whatever that might be. Um, some of them are looking for romance. Some of them aren't. Um, those that aren't, they're just happy doing whatever it is that they're doing. Met a guy today. He says, I just want to scuba dive, man. That's all I want to do. And uh, I've met another guy today that says, I met two guys today. And one guy just says, man, I just want to meet a woman. <laughs> so, you know. It runs the gauntlet, and neither one's right, and neither one's wrong. And But the funny stories, and the ones that go from bad to ugly, if you will, um, are the romance stories. Uh, and they usually start off something like, uh, well, let me back up. I will talk to guys and they're brand new here, and they just met the girl. And I'm asking them these questions, these little qualifying questions that I've come up with over the almost six years I've been here. And they'll tell me, well, she's, I'll ask her, well, does she have this? Does she have that? Is, does she say this? Does she say that? And they'll answer me. And I'm thinking, and I'm thinking to myself, this is a train wreck. Because this is fitting a pattern that I've, I've, I've seen. But they all say the same thing. They go, I know that it doesn't sound really good, but she's a really good girl. She really is. And I just go, okay, 
All right. I'm not going to deny it. I don't know. I haven't talked to her. I haven't met her. But I'm thinking to myself, I think you're going to find a little different conclusion after some time. <laughs> and I think that the words wishful thinking play right into that. They're being told as I was told. This has happened to me. I'm not excluded. I'm part of this, this little scenario, okay? <laughs> and is that you, you, you hear this negative thing about her and she tells you another negative thing and another negative thing and you just sort of reject that because you're filled with wishful thinking. You just want it to work. So the logic kind of goes out of your brain and the emotional part of you takes over. Um, another critical component of this that runs parallel is that when talking or having an exchange, especially online, you're being told exactly what you want to hear. I should rephrase that. I was being told exactly what I wanted to hear. And I think where I had a leg up on some guys is that just because of experiences in the past um, and old sayings and isms that I got from people that I respected that gave me these little nuggets of information, I was able to store those in my hard drive here and bring them out to the surface and realize that what I was hearing wasn't real. It was an illusion. But it's a real easy trap to fall into. So one popular uh, notion out here, which I think is unfair. Now, I didn't have this feeling two years ago. I was on the other side of the fence on this issue. But I've since changed teams <laughs> because I'm watching it for a long period of time. And that's the idea of getting scammed out of money and being taken advantage of. Um, and I think that the Filipinas, the women, get painted in a very bad light. Are there bad people in the world? Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just the Philippines. It's in America. It's in Argentina. It's in Russia. It's anywhere that people interact. And when there's a man and a woman dynamic or a business dynamic, there's going to be some, some bad players in it. That's just life. That's just the way it works. You need to be aware of that. Where we put ourselves or where I put myself at a disadvantage is that I had so much wishful thinking that it was easy for me to kind of fall victim to it when in actuality I was just being a volunteer. I've said that before previously also. And where I'm being told what I want to hear, and here's a very common thing, and it really came to light today, from a buddy that I talked to who just joined uh, yesterday, um, Filipino Cupid. And within an hour, he had 250 requests to be friends. And he spent hours on there. And he reminded me, it took me back in time, because I'd forgotten this, that the women that contacted him were telling him just what he wanted to hear. They would see his picture or they would talk to him on a cam deal and he would appear and they would say, oh, you're so handsome. Oh, you're so this or oh, you're so that. Well, who wouldn't want to hear that? And where I think I had a leg up on guys is that when girls or women, I should say, told me that, especially about being handsome, in the back of my mind, I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> I just know that that's not, I love hearing it. It sounds great. Makes you feel wanted and it makes you feel good about yourself. And it's positive affirmation. I'm being told what I want to hear. But I had this, this little, if I was 25 years old again, and they were telling me that, I'd believe it. Because I know it might be hard to believe, but, you know, 40 years ago or 45 years ago when I was 25, 
I was a fairly nice looking guy. And Father Time has not been all that kind to me. And I know where my status is. I'm fully cognizant of that. And I said, not all of these 125 women I'm going back to when I'm doing what my friend did uh, are blind. All right, They all can see me just fine. So I'm having a little smoke blown up my skirt here. And that put the caution flag up. And I think that helped me. And then when I did start to get involved, um, I found myself being taken advantage of to some degree. And it happened very slowly. But I would start off, for, as an example, I would start off with two or three ladies that I agreed to meet with, just to have drinks, as friends. That's it. And they would say, hey, let's go to um, the Why Not? This was back in the day, five years ago. I'd say, okay, we'll go in over to the Why Not? Because you guys like to dance and jump around, and that's fine. I'll pick up the check because I'm the millionaire foreigner, right? And by the time we got to the Why Not, 11 people were with us one time. Everybody had texted, hey, we're going to the Why Not, and we got a foreigner with us. And so the first time it happened... I just thought it was coincidence, and I thought, well, okay, I'll just be a nice guy. It still isn't breaking my bank. It's, you know, a buck to get in, and you get a free drink or something. So everybody got a drink ticket. Everybody got in, and it was like no big deal. I got to play the part of the hero, and it actually made me feel kind of like a big shot. Um, it came to my realization that the opposite was happening. The more that I... Uh, was easy peasy with the dollar and the more that I was kind of a pushover and the respect o meter for me was lowering down as opposed to rising up and so a second time that happened at that moment I went ahead and followed through and I paid the entrance fee and we all went in Again, it was like 10 or 11 people. And I stayed for about an hour. I said goodnight to everybody. I went home. And I said, never again am I going to go down that rabbit hole. I'm not going to allow that to happen. And it's my fault. This is the point I want to make. It was my fault that I let it get to that level. I need to set up some boundaries. I need to set up some parameters here. And I need to abide by them. Or else not only am I going to lose my money, but I'm also going to be disrespected. No one's going to see me. They're going to see me as weak. Because I am being weak. So, that being said, um, where the ugly comes in, is that there's guys that will take it to the next level. They'll meet somebody. And again, it doesn't matter. I always say the time frame, you should slow down. And my own personal deal is a minimum of six months to know somebody. I've since been proven wrong on that. Um, I made a video a while back that I know of a couple of three guys out here that have, and I was thinking of one in particular that I met way back, I think in February, um, that has bought houses and brought in the kids and raising them and all that kind of stuff, and they're totally content and happy, and I thought they were just getting taken for a ride, and I was wrong. However, there is a flip side. There are the guys that are buying the houses or taking on four or five kids and a mom and a dad and setting a girl up with the allowance and then her family with an allowance and um, <clears throat> it's not ending well. They're finding out after the fact things as terrible as she's married and uh, actually has a guy somewhere else. Um, I am of the belief that they are not doing a gut check Oops, Gaylord just fell over. Oh, well. <laughs> he's, he's had a hard day. <laughs>
anyway, they're, they're being told what they want to hear. And as long as that keeps happening, they're going to stay in there. And they're going to find, as I found, the second time I had 10 or 11 people going in, I'm being taken advantage of. And it was because I had wishful thinking and I was hoping that everything was going to be just rosy and perfect. It never is. Um, boundaries, parameters. I'm going to give you one personal story and then I'll call it a day. <clears throat> when I met baby May, when I first started dating May, we've been together now four years. When I first started getting together with her, I was, she was taking advantage of my good nature to the degree. She didn't, it wasn't intentional, but it was happening. And here's what would happen. After I met her, we were on again, off again. We would see each other. I had other things I was doing. She was working. So it was kind of a catch is as catch can kind of thing. And then she would call me and say, hey, I've got a couple, three days off. Um, would you like to, you know, can we get together? And I said, sure, absolutely. And so I would tell her, I mean, she lived in a, uh, what's it called, a boarding house with her sister down this little tiny street, more like an alley. And it was this heroin drive that I'd have to make from my apartment past the public market, which is just chaos and it was hot as hell and then I had to hang a left at Mang and Assault that was my that was my landmark because none of the streets have any names they all look alike and then I'd go down two streets and I'd make a left and I would park and it was hot did I mention how hot it was <laughs> her and I were at that stage of dating and so she would call me or I would call her well either way and I would say, okay, I'm going to, it's 1130. I'm going to pick you up at 12. Will you be ready at 12? And she would say, yes. I said, would you do me a favor? Will you just, because I don't want to park the bike and leave it and then walk back to your boarding house. In fact, I never did go back and see the boarding house. Well, maybe once I did. But she would just come out. And I don't think she wanted me to see the boarding house because it was so funky. And um, either way, so I would say just be outside, you know, at 12 and hop on the bike and let's get going and move on with our day. <clears throat> Four or five times in a row, when I would go to pick her up, I would say, I'm leaving. And she would say, okay. And I would say, are you ready? And she would say, yeah. And I would say, okay, now I'm going to be there at noon. So please, you know, and I'm just... American guy on a schedule, right? And May is on Filipina time, which is whenever. And so I would go out and I would park the bike and I would sometimes be able to get through, sometimes not because of the connection deal. Um, so I would send her, she didn't have a load or I couldn't get an internet connection. So I would just cool my heels and I could not buy a piece of shade where this boarding house was. It was downtown and I would Finally, I figured out that I parked across the street at a bank. I could get out of this blinding sun. Did I mention it was hot? Anyway, so I would actually start getting a sunburn because she'd make me wait for 15 minutes, 20 minutes one time. And by the time she got on the bike, I was pissed. Now, and I used to say, you know, this isn't right. And she'd just say, oh, I'm sorry, you know. And that was that. So that happened three, four, did I say five times, maybe? I don't know. I lost cat a long time ago. So now let's just call it trip number six. She calls me up, or I called her. We agreed to get together. As usual, I'm going to pick her up at the boarding house. I got there, and just like I made the conscious decision about not paying for ten people to go into the why not, at that point, I made the conscious decision that I was not going to wait more than five minutes. And I, and I pulled up. Sure enough, she's not there. I got a message through to her, and I said, I am here. And she said, I'm on my way. 
And that, and I know that it's a 45 second walk from where she was back this little alley out to where I am. I said, okay, good. Five minutes, no May. I went home. Just left her. By the time I got home, I had like four messages. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And I wrote back. I said, I'm home. She said, what are you doing at home? I said, you didn't show up. And she said, well, I'm here now. You know, please come back and get me. And I said, no. I'm not doing it. What, what, what are you doing? Said, I'm just going to stay home. I was going to be there. This is the fifth or sixth time I've had to sit out in the sun. My face is getting burnt to its crisp. And you're disrespecting me. You're not respectful of my time. And so I left. And as far as I'm concerned, I'll never come by and pick you up again. And she goes, well, are you home? Like, yeah. And that was, and then about an hour later, there was a knock on my door. It was May. <laughs> she had taken a trike, and then she took a, what's it called, a jeepney, which is where you crammed in like a bunch of sardines with a bunch of other hot, sweaty Filipinos. <laughs> kind of lump up the hill about eight miles an hour. And the smog and the sweat and the, <laughs> the noise. And guess what? Whenever I told her, I said, I'll be there at one o'clock. And, or you can take that jeepney again. And she was never late again. It was simple. I set down boundaries. Um, I set, uh, it was, I had wishful thinking in the beginning. <laughs> but then reality set in. And so, I just put an end to it. Now you take that out, that little story of just the why not where I'm paying, you know, five bucks or something, ten bucks that I shouldn't be spending and curt and stopping it, seeing it's a problem to stopping it at, at, at the gate. Um, the problem with May when we first met, no, just not going to take it. I'm just not going to put up with it. This is my turn. All right. And if you can't, if you can't be on time, then screw you. You're disrespecting me. And actually, after having done that, May, I felt, respected me more. She knew that what I, I, I said, what I said, I did what I said I was going to do. And that was on her. And never again was she ever late. Boy, you go, go from the bad, you want to go to the ugly. There's guys that, even though they can see the red flags, they know that there's probably a problem. They choose to ignore them, and next thing you know, they're out 40, 50,000 US dollars in some way, shape, or form. And along with that, they got a broken heart and a mistrust of Filipinas. Well, I don't blame the Filipinas. I blame myself for not having set the boundaries. It's not paradise. I don't care how many times you hear that word. It's not paradise. It's life. And that's my lecture for tonight. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video.